everybody. I'm Bill Sanders, and this is Watch Art Sci, the art and science of watch collection. Um, to kick things off today, we're going to have the watch of the week, and this week's watch belongs to Crystal Gormson, and it's this gorgeous squadra. I saw this thing. And I thought, wow, what a neat, uh, what a neat, neat watch uh, she has. It's a Zsa Lacoutre Reverso Squadra Chronograph GMT, the Palermo Open Edition. It's sort of a mouthful, but <laughs> for our purposes, it's Crystal's Squadra. It's a big watch, especially for a Reverso. Reversos, I think of them as a little smaller than this one but this one is really very interesting and as you can see there's when you open it up you can see the the movement on the inside of it and it is when you have it out to the side you can see it's sort of peeking out there it's uh, the uh, dial now faces the uh, back uh, another feature of it is that <coughs> Excuse me. Another feature of it, it has a deployment uh, band on it and um, Shaza Lacoutre, one of my favorite, very favorite brands. Wonderful watch, and I want to thank uh, Crystal for letting us uh, show this watch. Here's a, another picture of the, of the dial, get a little better idea of it. It's got a lot of inf information there. Uh, it has at the 3, 9, 6, and 12 uh, uh, second hands, uh, sub, sub dials, the date. <laughs> so it's, a, so it's a, a very well informed watch and a chronograph at the same time. Okay, thank you, Crystal. Uh, today, I want to get started with a certain concept that uh, really isn't discussed very much among watches because there aren't very many watches that use it and it's called resonance and resonance is a process that was discovered among other people by Galileo and what Galileo had noticed was that his uh, chandeliers and some other things would swing during storms and stuff and he got interested in in that. So what he did was that he timed the amount of swing time there was and found out that no matter where it started from, the amount of time for the amplitude to swing from one side to the other was the same. And so if something started way out here, um, it would take just as much time as something was closer. Now, the the big the determining factor was the length of the I guess whatever was holding the chandelier up from the chandelier. Now the same. Um, oh, by the way, too, there was something sort of cool. He wanted to time it, so I guess his speedy was in the shop or something. And so instead of using his chronographer, he he, he timed it with his heartbeats. Then he found out that the that the uh, swing time or the amplitude was the was the same number of heartbeats whether it started way out here or started in, in closer sort of a I mean, whenever you know he got his speedy back and he didn't have to do that anymore okay uh, so let's take a look at the the general mm, concepts real quickly you have uh, something that's called an exciter you have a resonator and then you have sympathy. Now, you can see in the picture there, you have the um, uh, these two pendulums. Uh, a, a guy named um, uh, Jean Dier was the one back in 1790, right before the French Revolution. He sort of thought, well, you know, this is, let's see what ha happens if I can get these guys coordinated. now. The interesting thing about resonance is that resonance has always been seen as a problem. I mean, it's a problem because uh, you're going along with your watch, 
and something happens and throws it off. And so what do you thought? Well, if there was some way that I could use residents to help keep better time, we ought to try it. And so we did. Um, and he took uh, two pendulums and uh, found out when they were attached to a common base, they sought what was call, called sympathy. <coughs> mm, excuse me. And by sympathy, they mean they would they would go together, okay? Or they would go on opposites like this, uh, different types of sympathy. Okay, uh, now, right around the same time, a little later, uh, Abraham uh, Louis Breguet, um, who became aware of Jean Vier's uh, work, that well, let's let's try it, and he wanted to make it with a pocket watch. Okay, so uh, he made a pocket watch. He made uh, three of them. Uh, one he one was for the King of England, one was for the King of France, and one was for some other guy. Okay, and uh, they didn't know until very recently. Um, Christie's auction house uh, was able to get their hands on it. And um, they, I think, eventually sold it between 800,000 uh, and I think uh, about a million and a half dollars. It, it was huge. So, I mean, there's, these are not common. Um, John Vier made some clocks. He made about three, three or four of them. I'm not sure how many. And, but we know that Breguet only made three. Okay, so what's the big deal here? Now, um, the, the idea of keeping accurate time is that one of the things they found out about resonance, it, it could work to sort of act as a, a force to keep other disturbances awake, okay? <laughs> In other words, the, the resonance was able to have finer accuracy if they used it together. And, um, okay, so let's take a look at this. Now, in the resonance that we're gonna look at, uh, we can talk about these two pendulums I made out of some bolts from the garage and some Christmas string that I found around the house. And um, about the most important thing about it, you're supposed to have the length of the string to be the same, and they're pretty close. <laughs> you have the the two uh, parts of resonance are called the exciter and the resonator. Now, the first time I did this, I couldn't believe it. It, 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 it really was cool. And what happened when they have the same base, make a real simple experiment, and the exciter starts moving, it will then resonate to the other one and the other one will start and then its movement will then excite the other one so the the exciter becomes a resonator and the resonator becomes the exciter and they go back and forth it to me it was it was really very interesting um let's take a look at it okay so i start off by exciting it by simply dropping it now look at the one on the on the left it's starting to move and then it excites the other one that it's moving again it becomes the exciter again it sort of passes it back and forth now excuse me the ideal was one of the resident watches that was eventually uh, created they coordinated this uh, let's take a look now. We'll take a look at the same thing in uh, slow motion. Okay, get this guy going. There he is. Okay, okay. Now you can see how the starting off with the exciter and it gets the other one going. Excuse me. It stops now, and it is a resonator, and so, but the resonance passes back to the to the original exciter, 
and then it'll start going again. There it goes. That is the, the basis of resonance. The next one I want to take a look at is how you have, how, how you get what we'll call sympathy. And sympathy is when things are going together. Now, what happens is that in a state of resonance, if you, if some outside influence hits it, the 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 resident the residence itself will bring them back together. Now you go out and you knock your watch around a lot, and so what we're going to do is see how residence sets that straight. Um, in this this uh, this last video, you can you can see how this is done. Uh, here you have two of them drop together. Okay. Now, there's the outside and it's that whacked one. And now notice at first it was outside of sympathy, but look at how they work to get back together again. Okay. And this is what is important about residents in watches because they go through all kinds of bangs <laughs> and things. And um, residents helps keep them uh, on the right time. Okay, uh, well, now what we'll do is we're going to have an unboxing. Let's see what we got in the box. Okay, um, it's time for an unboxing. Let me get my box. This arrived from my friends at um, Luxury Horology and... New York City, and I put it in a medium express box. Let's take a look here. And let's see. Well, we got another box, a small box, like a Russian doll. Okay, let's see. And this guy is bound up in a soft box. I'll take this off and take this off. Get everything out of here. And here we are. And inside here, huh. Let's see what we got. Okay, this is and here it is my FP Jorn chronometer wrist. On. I can't say it. Um, resonance. <laughs> Anyhow. Well, I guess it wasn't much of a surprise that uh, the watch in the box was a resonance watch. Uh, this one is by F.P. Jorn. And it is called the Chronometer R resonance and it's the it comes from a, a line of of um, of this particular uh, model that goes back to 2000 I think it's 2000 or 2001 okay probably 2001 and this one is from 2002 and um, it ha it's uh, the movement in the back is brass and it has a rhodium uh, coat on it uh, for protecting it. Okay, now, there were three calibers of this made of uh, 1499.1, 0.2, and 0.3. Uh, this one is 
1499.1. 1499.2 was pretty much the same, except they had gold plated, uh, gold plates, not gold plated, but gold plates and gold bridges, solid gold bridges and plates. Um, and they also covered up the um, the barrels in, when they when they put that on. I don't know why, but they did. But otherwise, it was uh, pretty much the same thing. It was uh, the new um, my uh, chronometer um, souverain uh, has uh, that gold, the rose gold plates and and uh, bridges too. Okay, now the third one. It's called uh, 1499.3, and instead of having uh, sort of dual times like this one does, it it had what to either be considered dual times or 12 and 24. Um, one of the the little sub dials was like this one, and the other one was a, excuse me a 24 hour um, a 24 hour one. Okay, um, the way this thing works is you have the two special balances, okay? And these two special balances have to be put just in the right distance between each other. And the way they adjust it, there's an adjustment um, wheel in the middle, and it's on a rack and pinion steering, and what has to be done is that it has to be adjusted, uh, and it's and there are also special uh, weights and uh, timing weights on them. So it's something that you have to send back to uh, the uh, Pijorn Labs in Geneva. So unfortunately, I wish my watch repair guy could do it, but uh, that's not going to happen. And the watch has to maintain an accuracy of five or plus or minus five seconds a day, which is fine initially. Uh, but you know, any watch, I don't care what kind of watch it is, unless it's the quartz, maybe a cheap quartz, well, you don't have that problem with. But with mechanical watches, uh, if they're not serviced on a fairly regular basis, um, you're going to have that kind of problem. Some are better than others about it. Uh, this one, though, is a rather needy uh, watch. I'll put it that way. But it's one of the few that has uh, resonance. The other ones, the contemporary ones I know of, are um, okay, uh, Beat Haldeman, had something called the H2 Flying Resonance, and Armin Strom, recently came out with the mirrored force uh, residents. Uh, there, there's one by um, uh, Dufour called the uh, duality, but it doesn't use residents. Uh, another one by M B and F uh, also that uh, a lot of people confuse with using resonant, but it actually doesn't. They don't claim it does either. So anyway, so right now, if you're interested in a residence watch, you have one of three, the FP Jorn, Beat Haldeman and the Armin Strong. And they're really, to me, they're one of the most interesting watches around because of, I mean, mecha mechanical watches. Okay, well, I'd like to get your opinions on that, what you think of that, and uh, any kind of comments that you have. Also, too, if you like to subscribe, this is an invitation as always. And I'll see you Sunday. Bill Sanders with art, my watch art side, <laughs> the art and science of watch collection.